First things first, let's talk about facts and works. Your boy, mm. mash no works. Talk about guns, me on that work. Never. And to make shit worse, I got all five, that's rule blood first. Mm. He got dinged and he got burst. Next outcome, getting put in the dirt. Dead How boy. the fuck are they king of the shit? How? When none of them's king and shit. Pussy. It was me who got hey. man hitched that hitch in front of his bitch. Oh no. No, we glad we bruised that witch. Spot me your up, man's letting it rip. Future Fitness. Future Fitness, Glasgow. Some nice pieces. I'm gonna do a little bit of a tour after uh, after I've done five minutes of warming up. But room for legs. From what I can see, there's some decent prime pieces in here, which is quite surprising. It should be good fun. Have a little bit of play around with different pieces. Probably not gonna do too much work in the sense that when you are on prep, the smartest thing you should do, or when you're dieting, the smartest thing you should do is just stick to very similar moon patterns and also volume. Because the worst thing you can do is get carried away with doing too much volume on exercises you've not necessarily done before or equipment and be sore as fuck the next following day. So I'm gonna play it obviously smart, do what I need to do and that's pretty much it. So annoyingly I forgot my headphones and the music ain't great in here. Five minutes to warm up, sort this fucking bean out. Leg day motherfuckers. Fucking get it. 11 weeks tomorrow. As I always say, we're coming. Ah, that five minutes was hard, but I needed to do that after sitting in the car for four hours. Obviously, I'm getting leaner, but I'm definitely not getting fitter. That was five minutes, but that was fucking hard. I tried, do, I tried doing it no hands as well, back in the 2019 day prep. Nah, hold on. So, leg day wise, they've got the pin loaded prime leg press, which is pretty good. They've got the Cybex version of that over there as well. Pro line ham curl, hammer shrimp hack. V squat, prime pin loaded shoulder press. I've never seen that before. Prime pin loaded preach curl. I've never seen that before. Tri tricep extension. Never seen that before. Pin loaded chest press. Never seen that before. Got some of the pre core, dual stack, nitrum, Cybex adductor. Got the Bravo Cybex. Cable stack, it's fucking really good cable stack that. So I'm gonna pretty much mimic my session as I usually would do. I don't see why I need to change too much. So I'm probably gonna start off with a toe press on the leg press, adductor, lion hamstring curl, or seated, seated hamstring curl, leg extension, hack, leg press, abs, pretty much. Getting in these machines are fucking hard. Yep. Yep. I reckon I can stack that today. Final one, then we're gonna stack this motherfucker. It's always nice the first thing you put in your logbook is stack. Strong. <laughs> now it's quite a heavy start. I, did, I just did the, um, the 77 kilos, the 170 pounds. It's quite heavy to be fair. I know I can do the stack, but it's heavier than what I thought it'd be. Right, first set of the day. Forget about this. Think about this. Driving for your knees rather than your, your ankles. I like to keep my leg a little bit straight. You'll notice that I use the bottom pads here rather than the top pad where I'm creating more knee flexion like this. When I create more knee flexion, I'm more likely to use my hips a little bit more. Whereas when I go like this, more of a straighter leg, I'm isolating my adductors a little bit more. So if your stacks are light, use the uh, bottom pins and make it a little bit harder for yourself. Or if you can, do it straight leg like that. See how you get on with that. Right. One force one. Come on. Come on. Yep. Oh. It's really nice. A little bit hard to get short as you start fatiguing, but fucking hell. Oh. The only problem is a bastard to get out of. Fucking hell. And we're out. It's nice that. I haven't tried this version of a Cybex adductor, but I used to 
use one and it used to be really light. Like I'm talking gym pin, 40 kilos on top of it, but that was a stack for 15. Obviously, the more I use it, I'll get strong as fuck on that quite easily, but, and you probably need to gym pin it, most people would anyway. But not bad, really nice. The only problem with using fucking machines that you've not used in a long time or before is the actual setup of it. Does this not go higher? range of motion at the top. I can do it, I just need to be more wary of not dead stopping it and banging it at all. Because when I do that, it just fucking throws me off massively. Because ideally, where my knee needs to be is there's a pivot. So some machines, you'll see like a, a little arrow. That's where the axle is. So ideally, what your knee should be in line with that. So as you can see, my knee is pretty much in line with that. So if you ever see that on a machine, it's basically where, you see on a leg extension and leg curl, it's basically where your knee should be. So make sure you line it up properly. Right, no stack for me today, I don't think. Much as I'd love to, just be smart. 77.1. Do you ever feel like your fucking hips are coming forward on a leg curl? Seat belt, whoa. No way I'm moving from here. Right, George, switch your fucking head on, you little prick. Yep, 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 yep. Here we go. Six and a half. Thank fuck I didn't go for the stack, Jesus. I've probably got one. The handles are too far away. And I find myself, I just want to lean forward like this. Might need to adjust the seat. George. Yeah. Oh. That definitely helps. So, shout out Lewis Jones, Lewis Future Physiques. That's how I know him by. I just know his username on Instagram. Gaz, videographer man, came in. And he said, use a foam roller, push against here. Because I've only got short limbs, hold on to this quite hard. So I pushed it against there like that. Good shout. Good call, guys. Oh, that's a much better set as well. Just like that. Another really good piece is the, uh, I think it might be the V1 or V2 Cybex leg. Cybex Eagle leg extension. I haven't used this in a long time, but from previous experience, it's a fucking good leg extension if you've got it. Think about, you've got the axle, you've got the pivot point here. So every time you see this, like I said, that's where your knee should be, in line with that. Not further forward, not further back. Always look for these spinny arrows on machines. It's hard to know what numbers are what when you've not used it in a long time or you don't know what it is. Sometimes you've got to spend a little more time warming up to make sure that you get the right weight because there's nothing worse than overestimating it or underestimating it. So if you need to do an extra couple of warm-up sets, especially if you're in a a gym that you're not used to, just take your time. Don't fuck the sets, especially when you're doing low volume and the goal is fucking all out. Like you can't afford to be doing three, four sets to make up for it, you know? It's two sets, give you everything. That's what the warm ups are there for, to make sure the setup, everything feels on the money. Right, Georgie boy, fucking stop talking and get your fucking head down, you little prick. Three, two, one. Short. Get it fucking short. That's 
hard. It's heavy at the bottom, that. Like, if you hit the bottom and you dead stop, you're fucked. I still prefer the Prime. Prime leg extension the best, 100%. Fuck me, I don't know if you can hear the music right now, but... I either want to headbutt a wall or fucking jump six foot off the fucking... out the window. I need to connect my quads better because I can't connect them at all. Like that set, I had no... no pump in my legs at all, so I'm going to go for a lighter loading and really focus on getting a good connection and a pump because that set, I felt fucking nothing, which is so frustrating. Because I've always struggled for years now fucking trying to connect my quads. That's probably why my quads are one of my weaker body parts. So I need to make sure this set I get a fucking pump. Otherwise I'm going to fucking swing for some sort of fucking Scottish man and his missus. Show us how our southerners fucking do it. Shout out the uh, assist your lift seatbelt. I don't have a code but use code stud. See what happens. Better. Oh my god, my quads much better. I actually, focus on trying to get a, like a peak contraction. Like at the top, I was trying to actually think about flexing my quads. Whereas the other set, the first set I did, just point A to point B. Much better. My quads are fucked, and that was about 30 kilo less. And literally, fucking, I think I got like 13, 14 reps. But I thought I'd get 20 with that. So it just goes to show when you actually isolate your quads properly, you actually probably need that much weight. Right. So downstairs. Apparently, some downstairs bits. We'll have a look around. Oh, yep, yep, yep. One of the best, if you've got this at your gym, 100% need to be using it. Why? It's probably the safest leg press you can use because realistically, if you fail, you start at the bottom anyway. So realistically, the only place you're gonna fail is at the start. Secondly, like, I just don't know that the stimulus that I get on my quads when using this, like a high rep set, is fucking second to none. It's a very unique feeling that I don't get on, uh, on a normal leg press, like a 45 degree one. So pendulum one, needs to be in your program, if you've got it. Yeah. So nice, slightly short range of motion. Keep the tension on the quads. Keep yourself locked into the seat, so push your hips down. You're onto the fucking money. That was good, felt good. Three, two, one. Yep. I can put 20 plate on there. Extra 20 kilos. Come on, I can fucking do that. I ain't a pussy boy. <laughs> 50, 75, 95 times two is 190. It is. B in maths. Still ain't fucking forgotten. Walking around to nowhere there. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy as fuck, boy. So. So. Heavy, real fucking quick. I think that was six reps. A little bit ambitious there, probably. Felt good though, but 
it's that sort of mid-range, like if you can't get past mid-range without spot, <laughs> the set's done. It was good. Somehow I ended up doing like a fucking pause at the bottom, unintentional pause. So that's six. Yeah, six. This should fly. This should fucking fly. Ah. Ooh, yep, 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 baby weight. Baby weight. Oh, yeah. Get 20. Come on. Eighteen. There's one more. There's one fucking more. Come on. Oh, fucking hell, that gets hard. Annoyingly, what I did at the end there was pause at the top. And what that does is that gives me more energy. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing these, like, not rest pauses, but... You just don't want to turn it into like a drag set where you're taking like 10, 15 seconds in between each rep and just grind out one, one, one. We've got 20 though. Doing three sets on this. Oh no, not sticking to my usual two or one working set. The reason behind that is one, it feels very, very good. And two, they've got a hammer strength hack squat upstairs. And I use it when I go visit the missus. It's just the handles are down here. I just don't like it. So I'm just going to stick to what feels good, which is this. And just, some, and just exhaust it, so I'll go on to an isolation exercise. So it'll only be like, I'm doing three sets, but that's the only sort of compound I'm gonna be doing in this leg session today, and it's a fucking good one. Right, let's fucking go, you little fucking cunt. Fucking bastard, you, you little wank stain. Gangry, the Scottish comes out of me. Three, two, one, up. Yep. Move this fucking weight. One more, get one fucking more. Ah! <sighs> 14. I'll tell you that. See what I did there on that last second from last rep is I fucking locked out my knee, took the tension off my quads, took an extra five seconds, and that last rep flew. Then I went quickly back into the eccentric and that's how quick I fucking failed. So don't spend too long on the top on this because you're just giving yourself more energy and that makes you stronger, make it harder. I can't even get up. Three, two, one. Thank you, I like this gym, yeah. But you're not allowed bags. However, because bags are apparently trip hazard, but I'm allowed to bring this around with me. It feels all right. The range of motion feels a little bit shorter on this and the padding's a lot softer. <laughs> That's all I can think of the difference. Is everybody ready for this? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Yeah. And again. Oh. The range of motion is definitely short on this one. I'm constantly thinking about trying not hit the bottom, which is sometimes quite annoying because when you hit the bottom, it kind of throws you off a little bit. But prime is prime. Some of the best kit in the world, 100%. I'm loading in pin five, which is the mid to length and range, where your hamstring is the weakest. And then what I'm gonna do for the last set is load on pin three, 
So I'm just going to get it in the length and range and on the contraction it's going to be a lot easier, especially as I'm starting to fatigue as well. <sighs> train the evening, I don't know how people train in the evening. I mean, it's not that late, it's coming up to seven o'clock, but I couldn't fucking do this. <laughs> not on a regular basis, shout out to people that do that. Twelve is my lucky number, so when you're 11, you feel like fucking giving up. Tell yourself your lucky number's 12, George. Fucking go for it. I ain't been this fucked in ages. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, yeah. This is nice. <sighs> uh, shit, the bed. You know that five second burn after you do calves, you just gotta sit there and just fucking wait for it to go. And all of a sudden you get up and you're like, yeah, good set. <laughs> 10, get 12. One. <sighs> oh. I think one of the worst like lactic acid build up is your calves. It just goes away after five seconds. It's pretty mad. You got, I can't, I'd have to sit there and think about it, like, kind of shake it off. But in my opinion, the best calf rate or calf exercise you can do is a toe press. On a pin low leg press like this, or even doing a 45 degree angle leg press, this is the best, 100%. What I've noticed so far on these sort of older prime pieces, the range of motion isn't, on the Lion Hamstrung, the range of motion weren't great. This I noticed, the range of mo compared to the plate loaded one at Ultraflex, the range of motion isn't great either. I don't know if it's just me, but we'll fucking make it work, because we always do. Fucking hell, move your fucking legs, as Mason Mount would say. Move your fucking legs. Yeah, range of motion is shit. Because I just feel like at the bottom, I'm not extending my arm out properly. It's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna cry, it's a bicep curl. Fucking look at these calves in this lighting, boy. I can't see it very well. Go on. Fucking shredding, mate. Right, rope crunch to finish. Doing abs every single day, uh, every single session right now. Do you need to be doing that? No, but a lot of people, including myself, like one of the biggest improvements I've made since last, uh, last time I competed is my, my midsection. Like when I say I've been training my abs relentlessly over the past like year or two, I was embarrassed by my midsection on stage in, in, in 2019. Like I looked like I had a GH gut to the point where my breathing was like so distended. Like my physique looked so washed out. Obviously there was a lot of things to do with my dieting and obviously the stress of dieting. And I was so embarrassed by that. So I hate being embarrassed. So now I've put a fucking relentless effort and I'll have the best abs on stage. No doubt about it. Thinking about chin, just short range of motion moments. It's just chin. That's what we need to do. None of this, just, if that makes any sense at all. 
To be fair, I don't give a fuck right now. Just think chin chest. Not this. This. That like lactic acid build up on you. It goes away like all that, but you like tense up like this. Can't move, like feel like you're fucking bloated. But that's that. How would I rate that session? Considering four plus hours worth of traveling, trading a lot later in the evening, different kit, different environment. I'm not gonna say it was amazing, but it was a, it was a seven out of 10. Things, the, the pendulum leg press felt good. The seated hamstring curl felt, felt good. The second set of the leg extension felt good. No, when I nailed that set up, the adductor felt actually very good. Cars felt pretty. So, Everything felt okay, like nothing amazing. But like I said, at this point in prep, dieting for just over nine weeks now. God, that's 10 weeks actually. Fuck, it's 10 weeks tomorrow I've been dieting. The fuck is that time gone? At this point, I'll take it. I've just had a lot more caffeine than what I'm used to. I had a monster earlier, which you saw. I had a pre-workout before we trained. So I've had half a gram of caffeine, which is more than I've had in probably years. I can't remember last time I had that amount of caffeine. So I kind of feel it a little bit. I feel a little bit wired, a little bit of headache. So, note to self, that pre-workout which I took earlier, which I thought was good, a good, a smart decision, turns out it wasn't. And the aircon here has dried my mouth out like the motherfucker. It's like being on fucking pills. Driest mouth. Don't take pills. We'll do it.